Who was four times more likely to be quoted by the Founding Fathers than anyone else? The answer might surprise you. I'm Christian Murray, and this is The Founders Club. The Founding Fathers quoted one of the great political philosophers of the Enlightenment, a French philosopher named Montesquieu. In his book, The Spirit of Laws, Montesquieu asked the fundamental question, what is the best way to organize government? Now how you figure out what the best way to organize a government is, is you look back at history and figure out how people organize their governments. Montesquieu organized his findings into three categories, despots, monarchs, and republics. Each one had a motivating force behind it, in which Montesquieu called a spring as in an internal working of a wind-up clock. Despots, which were prevalent in the ancient world and Islamic countries, had absolute power. Despots relied on pleasure and fear. This was in the physical realm. You were rewarded with pleasurable things or you were tortured or killed. You may even get a limb chopped off. Monarchs, which were found in the Southern and Western European Catholic countries, were held accountable in the next life, so they had some strings attached. They didn't have absolute power. Monarchs relied on honor and shame. This was in the mental realm. There were mental and emotional rewards and punishments. You can see this at the time of chivalry and honor. Republics, or a popular form of government, were more in the northern parts of Europe and they relied on virtue. This was in the spiritual realm. Citizens exercised self-control when they were aware that they will be rewarded or punished in the next life. Montesquieu saw that if citizens were conscious of the fact that each will be held individually accountable to God, who wants them to be fair, this would result in citizens having moral and virtuous behavior. So now Montesquieu has actually identified three kinds of governments, but he found something very interesting. When the legislative and executive powers are united in the same person or in the same body of magistrates, there can be no liberty. Again, there is no liberty if the judiciary power be not separated from the legislative and executive. Were it joined with the legislative, the life and liberty of the subject would be exposed to arbitrary control, for the judges would then be the legislator. Where joined with the executive power, the judge might behave with violence and oppression. There would be an end to everything, where the same man or the same body, whether the nobles or of the people, to exercise those three powers, that of enacting laws, that of executing the public resolutions, and of trying the causes of the individuals. He recognized that whenever the legislative, executive, and judicial branch are in one entity, tyranny would reign. And, well... The examples are limitless, all the way from Rome to, huh, at that time period, Great Britain. Montesquieu believed in what we now know as checks and balances. You have to have these things in their own separate branches so they can selfishly pull against each other. He also noticed something else very interesting, that whenever the motivating force behind that government changes, so does that government. As virtue is necessary in a republic, so fear is necessary in a despotic government. With regard to virtue, there is no occasion for it. Fear must therefore depress their spirits and extinguish even the least sense of ambition. So according to Montesquieu, what is the best form of government? Well, he states, The principles of Christianity deeply engraved on the heart would be infinitely more powerful than the false honor of monarchies, than the humane virtues of republics, or the servile fear of despotic states. Montesquieu is saying that these principles would do man more good than any of the governments that, well, are provided. But the problem is, how do you get bad people to do good things? Well, he believed that a republic with checks and balances was the best answer that ran off of virtue. But which virtue should it run on? Well, he believed that this system should not run off of any random virtue, but a specific kind. Montesquieu writes, The Christian religion, which orders men to love one another, no doubt wants the best political laws and the best civil laws for each other, because those laws are, after religion, the greatest good that men can give and receive. 
This all inspired the Founding Fathers. All throughout their writings, this can be shown in the Declaration of Independence to the Federalist Papers and the Constitution. This is why John Adams said, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And James Madison said, An elective despotism was not the government we fought for but one in which the powers of the government should be so divided and balanced among the several bodies of the magistracy as that no one could transcend their legal limits without being effectively checked and restrained by the others. Each of these ideas were inspired by Montesquieu's writings and I think it's relevant now more than ever before. Not only for understanding how our system works, but why it works the way it does and what motivates it and how we can actually maintain that. But what do you guys think? We always like to know your comments and thoughts and ideas on these subjects. So let us know below. And well, that's all we have for this video. I hope you learned a lot. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel and want to become a Founders Club member, hit that subscribe button. You can also check out our website below. It's got all of our articles and other videos on it too. And like always, history is a great story that needs to be told. So tell it.